I am delighted uh, to um, welcome and introduce our community spotlight. And today our spotlight features Janice uh, Incorporated Aging Strong Programs. And our uh, presenter for the Aging Strong Programs is Angie Hill. And Angie is the program specialist of the Aging Strong Programs. And a little bit of background uh, about Angie. She came to the Aging Strong Programs from, from St. Luke's Health System, where she worked for 12 years as an analyst and education communication specialist in the retirement department. Angie graduated from the College of Eastern Utah and studied secondary education at Utah State University and is the program assistant for the Aging Strong programs. She is lovingly called Flo by her teammates. So I'm gonna uh, turn it over to Angie at this point. And again, Angie, I wanna thank you for being here today to share the great work uh, that the Aging Strong programs um, are doing. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here as well. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so we can get started here. I want to thank Mary and uh, Dara for helping us. Uh, we had a lot of questions about this and they really got us going strong. So thank you very much for that. Um, Aging Strong has three unique programs. We are able to fill some gaps that other providers are not set up to do. We are probably very di different from um, organizations that you currently refer your seniors to. We're volunteer powered. And with that, you're gonna hear a lot in these slides. We're gonna talk about not only who we serve, but also about the dedicated volunteers that make it happen. Aging Strong is part of the nonprofit Janus. Um, most of you are familiar with Janice, but if not, uh, Janice is a health and human services organization with more than 20 diverse programs that promote community health, public policy, and they create op economic opportunities. Mm -hmm. I would like to take you through three of our key goals. Here at Aging Strong, we want to improve the quality of life for the elders we serve. We wanna change the perception of seniors in our community, and we wanna change how seniors perceive and value themselves. As a caregiver to my 90-year-old mom, that last one really is, pulls at my heart. When she was younger, I remember her as that confident, vibrant, feisty, she was a little go-getter, right? But as she aged, we see it, we all see it when they age, that confidence tends to slip away a little bit. She felt less appreciated, and I could tell she felt less valued. Were we a part of it? Did she put it on herself, you know, internally? Not sure. But what I am sure about is programs like ours are here to give the elderly a way back to the outside, to help them rebuild their self-worth, and to know that they matter. We have three programs, all under the Aging Strong umbrella. We have our Legacy Core Caregiver Support Program, Powerful Tools for Caregivers, and our Foster Grandparent Program in our schools. We like to say that we're one team with three branches. Our program has been in existence for decades, and we've been working alongside the Area Agency on Aging for almost as long. So here's the team. We're a powerful team of five. All of us are fierce advocates for the Aging Strong Program. Our director is Melissa Radlock. Unfortunately, Melissa could not join us today. Um, she had a family matter that pulled her out of town this week, but I know she did want to be here and she sends you know, all of you um, a good morning greeting. I know, and I can hear her. She's probably, you know, she's got her watch on. She knows what's happening right now. So I can feel her in my ear. Go Ange, go Ange. You know, she's a big cheerleader. Um, the next three teammates um, are here on Zoom with us. Uh, we have Lisa Underwood with Legacy Corps. Karen Koba McIver is our education specialist who oversees powerful tools for caregivers and our memory cafe. Uh, Asia Miller is the volunteer coordinator for our foster grandparent program. And you know me, I'm Ann Chill, so I'm Flo. Flo's here. Um, we hope you enjoy our presentation. And we encourage you to dive in to see how our services might benefit those that you serve. So who do we serve? 
our concentration is on elderly veterans, military connected families, family caregivers as an individual person first, and struggling students in our local classrooms. Each branch of Aging Strong has their own set of unique volunteers. And these are not your run of the mill volunteer positions. They are highly trained and vetted. They make long-term commitments, both to the individuals that they serve and to our program as a whole. They receive a reimbursement for their service and they absolutely, they love what they do. Um, what's really cool to me personally is that our volunteers are also older adults themselves. What the, um, the average age in our group uh, of volunteers is 71. So it's incredible to see them out there doing the work. Right now we have about 75 volunteers total and they make giving back their second act. So let's take a deeper dive into the programs themselves. Legacy Core Caregiver Support Program provides no cost homebound or home-based companionship and respite for elderly veterans and military connected families. Our senior volunteers in this program commit to a full year of service and weekly visits to the families they serve. I'd like to just stop for a minute and uh, let that sink in. They commit for a whole year and they commit to weekly visits with their people. This time we feel gives them that opportunity to build long-term trusted relationships. We see it open doors to isolated seniors, giving them the support they need to remain independent in their home and engage as long as possible. This also provides the family caregiver the priceless commodity of time, time to tend to their own physical, spiritual, and emotional needs. Transportation is a key component of this program. Um, we give rides to everyone. You know, we give we give rides to everywhere. I mean, we are way better than Uber because we're free, right? Um, I just learned a new term on, you know, just hearing everybody talk today. We are low barrier when it comes to transportation costs, right? Um, <clears throat> we get them not only to the must haves, the medical appointments, the grocery shopping, uh, but the kicker to me is that we get them out socially. Our veterans love to visit the Warhawk Museum. They love to go out for lunch. Um, just a cup of coffee and conversation, you know, sparks their day. I mean, just getting them out of the house is such a pick, pick up for them. It's just incredible. All of this works together to make this program extremely efficient and extremely personal. Many of our volunteers are veterans themselves. And I can tell you, there is no duplicating what I've seen with the vet on vet relationship that happens in our program. Caregiving takes a toll on the caregiver. We all realize this. So we have our powerful tools for caregivers. It provides free evidence-based workshops for the caregiver. We like to help them find balance while they're caring for their loved ones. And self-care topics included in the workshops include reducing stress, communication techniques, navigating family dynamics. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> Helpful resources and much more. Workshops are offered online and in person. And our attendees often make, maintain very strong relationships with those they meet in class. And we honor that by providing them a PTC alumni group as well. Our certified volunteer PTC instructors are experienced professional class leaders, and they love to teach. Many of them come from a social work or a healthcare background and tend to stay with the program long term. We also offer a memory cafe in partnership with the Meridian Library District. The cafe offers a dementia friendly space for caregivers and their loved one to come and experience just some time together, time with other people. Um, you know, when you're experiencing memory loss from cognitive dementia, sometimes you don't get out a lot. Um, so this is a time to come together for them and experience a social event and to learn from each other. <laughs> Foster grandparent programs. I mean, talk about bringing youth and elders together, right? <laughs> I 
We met grandma and grandpa with the underserved students in local classrooms, and the generational sharing just begins all on its own. It just takes off. Picture this. We've got volunteers working that are in their 80s, right? Working with five-year-olds. It just doesn't get any better than that. Um, they, the volunteers need to be 55 years of age or older, and they must be on a limited income. And they must love kids. It'd be pretty bad if they didn't, right? <laughs> so they're in the classrooms. They're teaching reading, writing, math, and social skills. And they earn a tax-free income that doesn't count toward other benefits. Won't knock them out of, you know, other benefits they might be receiving. Tax-free income. The average uh, paycheck they get a month is about $350. And if you're on a limited budget, um, that's not pocket change, right? That's 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 a big hit, and it helps them, you know, get health care. It helps them do other things, pay their bills, eat better. So we love supporting them. In this uh, program, we are we're certainly not. We don't know who's being served and who's doing the service. I mean, everyone seems to benefit: students, elderly, volunteers, the teachers, and this is at no cost to our schools pretty good. We see consistent academic improvement from the one-on-one -on -one tutoring that the students receive, and we get feedback back from our volunteers on how the program has changed their life, has given them purpose again, has given them a reason to get out of bed. The connection doesn't stop at school. We hear lots of stories about how they get swarmed by their students at the grocery store and at the library, and on the other side of the coin, the kids get a grandparent that truly cares about them, something many of them don't get at home. So that's who we are, that's us. As you can tell, we're all about connecting people to people. We love connecting with other organizations. We want to really you know, reach out and uh, make sure that all of us are totally taking care of the elders' lives and giving them the best life we can. In closing, I encourage you to think about those in your life, in your work, your family, your community, um, that could benefit from one of the Aging Strong programs, whether it's someone that needs our service or perhaps someone that could benefit from volunteering, right? We're ready, we're ready to help them.